Hello everybody, how are you? I hope you're doing all right. We have two weeks before the AP test and I wanted to start our free response review. Now, if we were meeting together, we probably would have started this by now, but you know, things got all a little bit mixed up, but no fears. I have taken the last five years of AP test going back to 2014 and I have put together common problems that you'll find in all of those tests. So there's a type of problem we're going to do now. I'm going to call them, I'm labeling it derivatives and integrals with graphs. And you're going to see the similarities in all of these questions. I'm going to send you all of them, the 14, 16, 17, 18, 19. And I'm going to send you their rubrics, how the AP would grade them. But I want to help you go over the first two just to give you some pointers in case you, you know, needed it. And you might not. So I'm going to do the 2014 and 2016 question number three. And ironically, all the questions were number three. On the 17, 18, and 19 tests, there was all question number three. So I want to spend time learning how to do this type of problem. Then when we think we're comfortable with this, we're going to go to the next type of problem. There's basically three types of problems I found. So we're going to take a couple of days on each one of those. And then we're going to look at different, different um, kinds of questions and put them all together just in case. So we're going to look at derivatives and integrals with graphs. So here is 2014's question. I have this graph. It's um, some line segments, one, two, three line segments. And it says it, three line segments. Always make sure you read the description. All right, it's uh, defined on the closed interval, three line segments and the figure above. G is the integral of negative three to X. Okay, so the first question is, what is G of three? Well, g of 3 will equal the integral from negative 3 to 3 of the function of f. And don't forget, area is the graphical interpretation of an integral. So I'm basically looking for the area between negative 3 and 3. So I got this little piece that's below the axis. I'm going to subtract that. And this big triangle above the axis, which is positive. So let's look at the big triangle. Its base is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Its height is 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. That gives us 10. We're going to subtract off this little piece, which is 1 by 2. So the triangle with a base of 1 and a height of 2. And half of that is 1. So g of 3 equals 10 minus 1, which is 9. All right. Next question. What intervals is the graph of G both increasing and concave down? Okay. So if G is increasing, all right, what does that mean? So remember, if G is defined as the integral, G prime, according to the fundamental theorem of calculus, is the derivative of this, which is just f of x. So g prime is defined as f of x. And consequently, the second derivative of g is defined as the first derivative of f. Okay? The derivative of g is g prime. The derivative of this is f of x. The derivative of g prime is g double prime. The derivative of f is f prime. That's a relationship that's needed in this question. So if something is increasing, it's when its derivative is positive. So I want to see when the derivative, which is the same as f of x, is positive. That means it would be increasing. So this will tell me increasing. All right. What about concave down? Well, concavity is a second derivative. And remember, the second derivative of g, or it's the same thing as saying the first derivative of f, which is the slopes of all of these graphs. Well, if it's concave down, we need to know when the slopes are negative.
So we want to find two things. When is f of x positive and when is f prime negative? That will tell us our answer. So if you look on the graph over here, we can see when f of x is positive, it's anything that's above the axis. After 2, now f is negative. When is f prime negative? So f prime is negative when the slopes are negative, here and here. So our intervals where this is true, that g is increasing. Now I'm writing out all of it because when you give your answers to the AP, you want to be as clear as possible. So it's increasing and concave down on negative 5 to negative 3 and 0 to 2. Now as long as you highlight the fact that, and not physically highlight, but point out that we were looking for f of x is positive and f double prime, I'm sorry, f prime is negative, then that's a, a reason for your answer. Now I'm going to send you the rubrics to these two. You're going to see what AP is looking for for an answer. And, you know, just so you can see what they're looking for. All right. Next question. Oh, we have a new function, h. is defined by this function. We're looking for h prime of 3. Okay, well, let's take the derivative. Quotient rule. It's the bottom. The derivative at the top. Minus the top. The derivative at the bottom all over the bottom squared. Now in this case we're specifically plugging in the number 3. 5 times 3 times g prime of 3 minus g of 3 times 5 all over 5 times 3 squared. <coughs> Excuse me. Now the good news I said these are pretty easy to figure out. 5 times 3 is 15. g prime of 3. Remember, g prime equals f. So what's f of 3? Well, f of 3 is negative 2. Right? 1, 2, 3 is negative 2. g of 3, guess what? We already answered g of 3 in problem number A, letter, letter A. g of 3 is 9. Now, the other nice thing that the AP test does, let's say you got this question A incorrect, and you had, you know, you missed something, you did a, a silly little error and got like 8 or 10 or whatever. As long as you used that answer here and did the question correctly with that incorrect answer, you would get full credit for this. So always make sure you do all the problems. Don't assume that C is harder than A. Now, it doesn't always go down as, as difficulty levels. So just do each problem. Do it the best you can. If you can't figure out a problem, just write something. You never know what you're going to get credit for. And if you're going to be using one of those answers in the future for a future problem, and you don't know what it is, just make sure you get some kind of answer so you can use it. All right, now a little calculation. 30 minus 45. That's over 225. So you can leave your answer as negative 75 over 225. Or if you recognize that, that's just negative one-third. Okay. All right. Last question for this one. We're looking for the slope of the line tangent to the graph of P. Okay. They threw that tangent to the graph to throw you off a little bit. What are you looking for? You're looking for p prime of 1, of negative 1, I'm sorry. That's what you're looking for, because that would be the slope. So let's take the derivative of p. So it's f prime of x squared minus x times the derivative of what's inside because of the chain rule, 2x minus 1. 
All right, so p prime of negative 1 is f prime. Let's see, negative 1 squared is 1. 1 minus negative 1 would be 2. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2, minus 1 is negative 3. All right, what is f prime of 2? Well, 2 is right here. That's a 2. What's the slope of that line? 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2. It's negative 2. We know that's negative 3. So p prime of negative 1 equals 6. Now you're going to see the evolution of these problems. That was in 2014. 2015 didn't have a problem exactly like that. It was another type of problem that we're going to look over. But 2016 had a problem just like that. And so did 2017 and 2018 and last year as well. So let's take a look at those. All right, let's take a look at 2016 specifically for now. So 2016. So here is the question. Okay, and just make sure you read the question. Be thorough in your answers. Don't rush through it, but think about them and don't skip things. So we got a whole bunch of lines up here between negative 4 and 12. And g is defined as the integral from 2 to x. Okay. And don't forget then, it would follow that g prime would equal f of x because of the fundamental theorem of calculus. All right, does g have a relative minimum or a relative maximum or neither a 10? So we want to know what's happening at g prime of 10. Is it a critical number? Well, we know that g prime of 10 would be the same as f of 10. Well, if you look at f of 10, its value is 0. So f of 10 equals 0. So that's good. It's a critical number. So what do we do with critical numbers? We test them. We test their derivatives. So if you go before 10, g prime, which is the same as f, all have negative values. After 10, oh, they still have negative values. We're not talking about slope, we're talking about the value. f of 9 is a negative number. f of 11 is a negative number. f of 9.9 .9 and 10.1 are negative numbers. So g of 10 is neither. a relative max or a relative min. Now it says to justify your answer. Now I'm sorry, justifying, they don't like to use tables. Tables are nice, but they don't tell you why. So g of 10 is neither a relative max or a relative min. And really the reason is because there's no sign change at 10. So you could say that g prime of x is negative. And what's the best way to say it? We can say it's, it's negative from, ne from, from 8 to 12. It's, it's, it's negative even before that. It's really negative from 6 to 12. But 10 is in the interval of 8 to 12. So if it's always negative, then it can't be a relative max or a relative min. All right. Let it be. Does the graph of G have a point of inflection? Ah, point of inflection is second derivative. And remember, the second derivative of G would equal the first derivative of F. All right. So we're looking at G double prime of 4, which would be the same as F prime of 4. So if you look at 4, uh, right there, f prime of 4 does not exist. Right? The slope doesn't exist at 4 because its slope instantly changes from positive to negative. Well, actually, that's good for us. So that's a potential critical number. So let's plop in 4 and see what we get. So we're looking at the second derivative, g double prime, which is the same as f prime. So just before f prime, the slopes are positive. 
just after 4, the slopes are negative. So according to our chart, it is a point of inflection. Now we have to justify it. Remember, justifying is not a chart. you got to tell why. So g of 4 is a point of inflection. And you can say this a number of different ways. I like to say it because because g double prime goes from positive to negative at 4. And if it changes sign, then it's a critical number, it's a max or a min, or in this case, it's the second derivative, it's a point of inflection. All right, 2016. Now the absolute minimum or maximum, absolute. So not just the locals, but does it have an absolute? The only thing that you got to remember for absolutes is if you have to test their endpoints as well. All right, so if we want a min or a max, or if we want to know when g prime equals 0 doesn't exist, which is the same as f of x. So when does that equal 0? Well, that equals 0, and you can look at it right on the graph, at negative 2, at 2, at 6, and at 10. These are all the values that you can try. All right. We also have to check their endpoints. So you must also check negative 4 and 12. That's a lot of points to check. Now let's think if we can eliminate any of these. That would be potential answers. Remember, we're looking for maxes or mins. So if you look at negative 2, see how it goes from the f, or which, which would be the derivative of g, goes from negative to positive. The values go from negative to positive. So negative 2 is a number we could try. But look at 2. It goes from positive to positive. Well, it goes from positive to positive. It's not a max or a min. So we don't even have to bother trying 2. 6 we should try because it goes from positive to negative. But 10, see it's negative and negative. I mean, not the slopes, their actual values are negative. So it's not a max or a min. And we already proved that. We're here. We proved that 10 was either a max or a min. So we don't have to test it. So we only have to find f of negative 4, f of negative 2, f of 6, and f of 12. The highest answer will be our absolute maximum. The lowest answer will be our absolute minimum. Now, to help us out here, let's calculate these. They're a bunch of triangles, right? It's just a bunch of area. So this area here is, well, we got four units long, four units tall. Half of that is eight. So these are all eight, aren't they? And these are both then negative four. Because we're only going to four and 12. We're not going any further. Okay, so those are negative four. All right. Now let's calculate. Actually, the easiest one to calculate here, I don't know, f of negative 4. We'll just go in order. So it's going to be from 2 to negative 4. Okay, 2 to negative 4, so it's 2, but we're going backwards. And why do we know it's going backwards? Because we're starting at 2. G is defined as starting at 2. So this way would be all the positives, or I shouldn't say positive, it would be what they are. These would be positive, negative, negative. In fact, I didn't realize I didn't put that, sorry, negative. But when we go this direction, everything works opposite. So instead of a to be negative 8, instead of negative 4, it would be plus 4. So if you're not sure about that, we can talk about that. But if I'm starting at negative 2 and going this way, I know it's 8, 
but since I'm going backwards, it's negative 8. But I go all the way to negative 4, the, the, the value negative 4, and the area is negative 4. But then we're going backwards, so really adding 4. So f of negative 4 actually equals negative 4. Now f of negative 2, again, going from 2 backwards to negative 2, means it's negative 8. Okay. If I'm starting at 2 and going towards 6, well, that's going to be a positive 8. If I'm starting at 2 and going towards 12, I go 8 and minus 8, which are 0, negative 4. So, as you can see from this calculation, my absolute max and min are the points negative 2, and 6. So I'm just going to write this and then um, you should probably write out like if you were writing this for me on a test I would completely understand what you wrote and I would give you full credit. However, you want to use as clear as possible for the AP test. You will want to write that the absolute minimum value occurs at negative 2, negative 8, and the absolute maximum value occurs at 6, 8. Okay? All right, one more problem. You will go the right way. All right, find all intervals for which g of x is greater than 0. So if you think of it, analytically or we can actually try numbers and see what happens. So we want g prime of x to be positive. Whoops, <laughs> less than zero. We want g of x to be negative. I think I even said g prime. I don't know what I'm talking about. So we want g of x to be negative. Okay. And remember, g of x is the areas starting at 2. So think about it this way. So our areas start at 2, right? This is kind of like our, our starting point for G is right here. Well, that was a very terrible line. Let's fix that. Okay. So if that's our starting point, can you think of it as, just so we talked about in the last problem, everything going this direction. Things will remain as they are, and anything going this direction would be opposite since we're starting from here. So if you think about it, g of negative 4, and we, we already calculated that, it equals negative 4, so it's definitely negative. So what happens as it's going? Okay, You can almost maybe see the point that it's always going to be negative until it gets to 2 at least. Okay? Because let's look at what g of, say, negative 2 is. So g of negative 2 from here to here, so going backwards, the opposite would be negative 8. What about g of 0? Again, we're just testing things to see what's going on. Well, g of 0 would be from here to here. It'd be negative 4. It'd be 4 backwards. g of 2, okay, since we're starting here, remember, from 2 to 2, the area is 0. All right, what happens after 2? Now we're going that way, we're going this way. So things are happening as we see it. So let's say we went all the way to g of 6, just to take a look. Well, that's 8. That's all positive. It's be, we're adding 8 onto it. And then what happens at, say, g of 10? All that 8 we added on, all of it was subtracted away. We're back to 0. And finally, at g of 12, we went down that negative 4. So what intervals will g be negative? 
So if you really think about it, it's going to be all the way from negative 4 all the way to 2. And then it's going to be from 10 to 12. Now in this case, it didn't ask you to justify your answer. So you could have just put these two. If you could look at this graph and tell from your intuition and from your knowledge and the ability that works backwards and forwards that this would be uh, a negative all the way from here to here and then a negative from here to here, you could have written that and got it right. Okay, so it may not be the best explanation for, for letter D there, but this is just a, a guide just to get you going. I want you to think about it and I want you to ask I mean, any questions you have. We'll have live sessions Monday, Tuesday, Thursday and Friday. And if you guys need, have any questions on Wednesday, I'm available in the morning. If you'd like to set up time for us to meet, we surely can. So there you go. Those are the first two problems. And I want you to please take a look at those and look at the answers for 20 or look at 2017, 2018, 2019 with the similar questions and see if you can come up with them. And we will talk about those on Monday and Tuesday. So by the time you get this video, it's already going to be either late Sunday or early Monday. So you're probably not going to have time to work on them. That's okay. We'll talk about them during our live session and then try those on Monday. And we'll talk about how you did on Tuesday. All right. Thank you. Have a great day. And I will see you soon.